Thank you for the introduction. So this is a joint talk with David Bald and Stephanie Delon. So um, nowadays, we carry on more and more wireless devices that may break our privacy in many ways. Hopefully, such devices often use cryptographic protocols to avoid that. But as you know, designing such, uh, such protocols that are safe without any attack is a very difficult task. And this is where formal methods can be useful because you, using them, we can do money, uh, formal proofs that the protocol is safe, that there is no attack. So this particular example motivates the need for such formal methods covering privacy. And this is the goal of this work. We'd like to check unlikability and anonymity in the symbolic model for um, an unburdened number of sessions and users. So intuitively, a system ensures unlikability when a, when a user may make multiple uses of it without others being able to link these uses together. So as uh, this work targets both unlikability and anonymity, but in this talk, I will focus on unlikability. We will work in the symbolic model, so I will recall its main features. We consider a symbolic attacker that controls all the network, meaning that it can eavesdrop messages. For example, if Alice sends this uh, symmetric encryption of some message N with the key K to Bob, then the, attacker, then the attacker can eavesdrop this message, and late, later on, he will be able to reuse this message to perform an attack. But it can also build new messages, possibly by applying cryptography. So for example, if the attacker knows the cipher text and the corresponding key, then he may deduce the, the corresponding plain text. He just, have, he just has to apply the uh, decryption function. And finally, he can, he can inject messages. So if we go back to the first example, the attacker can also uh, intercept this message and uh, inject into Bob one of its own message instead of the message coming from Alice. So in the end, we consider a quite powerful attacker controlling all the network. But on the other hand, we make the main assumption that this attacker cannot break cryptographic primitives. In a sense, we consider that they are perfect. But still, the whole protocol that, uh, that is using those primitives as building blocks has to be proved secure. So what are the pros and the cons of this model? So obviously, it is less, uh, less precise than the common computational model with Turing machines, probability, and so on. But on the other hand, uh, this less, uh, much less complex model allows for, uh, for automation. So we may have push-button ver verification tool in this model. What are the ingredients for modeling? So we use a, a term algebra with an equation theory for modeling the messages and the crypto primitives. Uh, we model the, the, the protocol and the attacker in a process algebra. And in this work, we use applied pi calculus for that. And we model security properties as either reachability properties or observational equivalents. OK, now I'd like to define the problem we want to solve in, 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 this, uh, in this work. And first, we have to define unlikability. And for that, I will use the example of ePassport. So here is mine. Uh, because you know that now in ePassport, we have RFID chips implementing a bunch of cryptographic protocols. And one particular thing we want to avoid is that anybody, any attacker, can trace us by wirelessly communicating with our ePassport we carry on. And we, we, can, we can't detect such attacks. So how we define this notion of unlikability? We compare two scenarios. In the first one on the left, we consider two sessions performed by the same passport, the same user. While in the second scenario on the right, we consider two sessions performed by two different users, two different passports. In a sense, this second scenario is ideal because there is nothing to link. And then what we want is that for any attacker and for any of its behavior, this attacker should not be able to observe any difference between those two scenarios. Uh, they have to be indistinguishable from its point of view. And we have a formal notion for that called trace equivalence, that is an observational equivalence between processes. And formal definition can be, you can, you can find the formal definition in the paper. OK, but the problem is maybe there is no attack for two users and, or two sessions, but there, there is an attack for more sessions and users, maybe four, five, six. We don't know in advance. That's why we consider um, a much complex scenarios with infinitely many users and infinitely many sessions. But still, the main ideas are the same. We have two scenarios. 
In the first one, we consider infinitely many users, and each one can play, at, can play infinitely many sessions. While in the second scenario, we still have infinitely many users, but now each user can play, can play at most one session. And we can encode this uh, into our process algebra using replication and creation of names. So for, for example, for the first scenario, we will have two replications. First one creates infinitely many users, and second one creates infinitely many sessions. And that is strong indicability as defined in this paper from CSF 2010. And this is what we want to verify. Our goal in this work is to automatically check this property for a large class of two-party protocols. So if we go back to the example of, of the e-passport, you can think of the protocol P to be uh, checked as the parallel composition of the tag role, the e-passport, and the reader role, so two-party protocols. What are the existing approaches? So first, we can do manual proofs, obviously. But as you may know, it is long, difficult, and highly error-prone. So we rather want automatic verification. And we can do that in this model. Um, the problem is that the only tools and methods that can deal with both these unbodied above sessions and users and some sort of equivalence are those three tools, Proverif, MonNPA, and Tamarin. And the problem is that they all rely on a too, impressive, too imprecise approximation of trace equivalence, meaning that at least for all our case studies, we systematically obtain false attacks. So we cannot use them directly to verify this property. We, we need something new. So now I can give a big picture about our contributions. First, on the theoretical side, we define two reasonable conditions, and we prove that they always imply unlikability and anonymity for a large class of two-party protocols. And this is interesting in practice, because we also show that we can actually verify precisely those conditions using existing tools, like the, the, three, ones, the, the three tools I just uh, talked about before. And we provide tool support for that. We, we built uh, a tool called UKNO that automatically checks those conditions. And finally, we applied this to a bunch of RFID protocols and obtained new proofs and attacks. Now I'd like to show you two generic classes of attacks and two conditions to avoid them, our, our two conditions. So um, first class is when there are leaks through relations over messages. And I will explain this with two examples, two easy examples. And the first one is very naive. We consider a tag and a reader sharing a key K, a, a symmetric key, a symmetric key K, and the tag is willing to authenticate itself to the reader. It will send uh, the, its identity encrypted with the key K to the reader. So obviously, because there is no freshness in this message, there is an attack. This protocol is linkable, and here is the attack. Uh, consider two sessions. The attacker just has to eavesdrop the first message of the tag and then perform an equality test over those two messages. And if those two sessions were, perf were, were performed by the same tag, the same user, then the attacker observes an equality, and otherwise, otherwise it will observe an inequality. So very easy, it just has to eavesdrop to trace a tag. Slightly more example, slightly more complex example. Now the reader is going to challenge the tag with a fresh nonce n. And the tag has to encrypt this challenge this nonce n along with its identity with the key k. And still there is an attack uh, because our active attacker can inject a, a constant challenge into two sessions and then perform the same attack as before uh, on the um, uh, tag's answers. So here, uh, the common problem is that for some malicious behavior of the attacker, there are some relations of our messages that leak information about involved agents, uh, involved users. And our main idea to avoid that is basically to require that outputs are indistinguishable from fresh nonces. Uh, so for example, if the protocol outputs a pair of an error message and a self text, then we will check that this message should be indistinguishable from a pair of the same error message but with a fresh nonce instead of the cipher text. So basically, we require that there is no relation at all um, in the output of the protocol, so no leak of this sort uh, of, uh, from the protocol. 
And this is roughly the main idea behind our, our first condition called from opacity. And you can find a formal definition in the paper. But still, this is not sufficient. There is another class of attacks when there are leaks through conditional outcomes. And again, I will explain this with an example. We still have a tag and a widow sh sharing a key K. There is a first part of the protocol that is not important. At, and at some point, the tag is going to send uh, the encryption of a fresh nonce N encrypted with the key K. Then the reader is going to check if the message he has received is really a cipher text with the key K. So he will apply the decryption function and test if he obtains a real message. If this uh, test holds, then he will answer with some other cipher text. And otherwise, it will abort the protocol. So there is an attack, and here is how it works. So in a first session between a tag and a widow, um, the tag is going to play the first part of the protocol with the widow. And at some point, the tag is going to send the cipher text to the widow, and the attacker intercepts this message. Then the attacker is going to do the same in a second session. And then it will inject the cipher text from the first session into the reader of the second session. And then the reader is going to evaluate its internal um, uh, conditional. And finally, the attacker is going to observe what does the reader. If those two sessions were performed by the same user, the same tag, same reader, then this test is going to, um, is going, this test holds, and because, uh, N1 encrypted with K1 is, is a cipher text with the key K1. And so the reader is going to answer with this other cipher text. And if uh, those two sessions were, were, weren't, weren't performed by the same users, then the reader is going to abort, and the attacker can observe this. Thank you. So here's the problem is that for some malicious behavior of the attacker, um, conditional outcomes leak information about, about involved agents. And again, our main idea of, to avoid that is to check that conditional evaluates positively for a user, for a, speci a specific user, if and only if the attacker did not interfere in the execution of that user. And again, this is uh, the main idea behind our second condition called well authentication. And now I can state our main theorem, saying that for any protocol in our class, if the protocol ensures our two conditions, then it ensures unlikability and anonymity. Now I'd like to, to say a few words about mechanization and application. Because in practice, the previous theorem is interesting only if we can verify our conditions. And we show that this is the case. We, we can use, for, exa for example, ProVerif to, to do so. We, we explain in the paper that using some encodings, we can reduce from opacity into an equivalence between messages and well authentication into a bunch of rootability properties. And both can be verified precisely using Proverif, for instance. And we built UKNO on top of Proverif that automatically checks our conditions. And finally, we, we applied uh, this tool and our methods to a bunch of RFID protocols. And we obtained new proofs and, new, and we found new attacks. So, um, notably, we, we have shown that basic access control protocol in, in ePassport is safe, is unlikable, and we found an attack on PACE. And all those results are new. Okay, it's too early. <laughs> Time to conclude. Um, I recall the contributions. So we have those two conditions that imply unlikability and anonymity. This is interesting in practice because we have UKNO that automatically checks our conditions. And thanks to that, we obtain new proofs and found new, uh, new attacks on a bunch of RFID protocols. Now, future works. So first, we'd like to improve uh, that method by extending the class of uh, protocols we can deal with and by using all the tools as backend instead of Proverif. And second, we seek other types of protocols, other areas where we could reuse the core ideas of this, um, of this method to develop similar but new techniques, new techniques to verify privacy type properties. Maybe evoting could be a, a possibility. Maybe you have, you have better ideas. 
and uh, I will be happy to discuss that if you have ideas. Okay, you can find uh, more details about this work and the tool at this address, and that's all I have. Too early, but <laughs> thank you. Okay, go ahead. So I have a question. So in this model, the attacker is a kind of external if dropper, but suppose that you care for an honest but curious verifier that is trying to uh, profile the tags. So if you were to study protocol, which choose uh, like group signature and other anonymous credential, do you think you can extend this to also prove uh, unlinkability and anonymity for this kind of protocol? I, I guess if the protocol uses um, group signatures, then there are more than two parties in the protocol, I guess. And in that case, we cannot reuse this method because it's only for two-party protocols. But when I said that our first uh, future work is to extend the class of protocols we can deal with, typically it's such, uh, such classes we, we, we target. Thank you. Okay. Can you tell us what is the time to do this verification, typically? Uh, so it's, it's quick. I mean, uh, <laughs> In less than five minutes, uh, we, we, we get a result for all our um, examples. Proverif is, is quite quick. Uh, so sometimes it doesn't answer at all, mm -hmm. but on our, on, on our case studies, it all, always answers something and quite quickly. 